Hi, this is Barry here, and you're very welcome to today's podcast episode from rightcom.com. And today I want to ask you a question. What does no mean to you? Now, if you asked me something and I said no to that to that request that you made, how would you feel? Now, for the majority of us, you know, no is a small word. It's only got two letters, but it has so much power over us. You know, if we think back to when we were small, you know, if our parents said yes to us, you know, if if I asked, uh, can I have that those sweets over there? Can I can I go out with my friends? Can I do this? Can I do that? And your parent says yes. You know, the world sees br- the world seems brilliant. It's you know, it's a warmer place, and we're not limited, and we can you know, we can do that, and everything's brilliant. And but ask the same question, and your parent says no. You know, in some way we feel limited, in some way we're constricted, and you know, the world doesn't seem as jolly and as fun as it used to be because you know, we, maybe we can't go out on a bike, we can't have those candies. Now, there was probably a good reason why our parents said no to that. Maybe you know, we were only after eating another bag of candy before, or another sweets before that, and you know, they knew we were going to be sick. Um, you know, maybe we should have. You know, we couldn't go out with our friends because we should be, you know, concentrating on our schoolwork and getting that done rather than getting that out of the way first before we can go out with our friends or whatever it is there could be a genuine reason why they actually said no to us but sometimes all those no's that we had when we were growing up you know no you can't have a dog no you can't go here or no you can't do this you know over time sometimes we don't see those though that word no as actually just being a small kind of reply to request maybe we, sometimes we take it in ourselves and we look at ourselves and say well you know why did i get that no you know was it something something wrong with me or you know is it is is, is it, am i am i am i less of a person and is that why i gotta know you know for example when i think about the times when we used to go to the discos you know on a saturday night um part way through the night there was this kind of you know there was a slow set so there was a kind of a couple of romantic songs and when they come on everybody was kind of looking for a partner or you know uh the single fellas would go around, you know, trying to chat up somebody and maybe invite them out for a dance. And, you know, for the majority of us, you know, 99% of the times you would walk up to a girl, you'd ask her out for a dance. And sometimes it would be rude. Sometimes it'd laugh in your face. And sometimes, you know, you get a snigger or sometimes you wouldn't get a reply. But sometimes you would get a no. And that's fair enough. You know, maybe they weren't interested. But, you know, you could actually internalize that no and you could say to yourself, well, why did she say no to me? You know, am I not good enough looking for her? You know, have I got bad breath? Is it the way I'm dressed? Is it, you know, all those different things. You're you're looking, you're, you're internalizing that no and you're trying to find an answer for it. Rather than, you know, on the other side, why she actually made that no. There could be a genuine reason for it. Maybe she's not interested in you. <laughs> Maybe she's a lesbian. Uh, maybe she's just broken up with her partner or her boyfriend and the last thing she wants to do is to get into another relationship. Maybe she's just out on a night out with the girls and the last thing she wants to do is, you know, having a boy tagging along with them and she's not interested. And, you know, she, I might know all those different reasons of why she said no, but if I internalize it the other way, I'm trying to find fault in myself. Why did I get that no? Was it something I did wrong or whatever it is? And sometimes you can, you can let that play with you. And it's not just even in our teenage years and when you're younger, like we still have it as an adult. You know, when it comes to, you know, even us now as if you're writing, if you're publishing, if you're blogging or whatever it is, you know, no, sometimes we get a no from an audience and we start questioning ourselves. You know, maybe we write a, a blog post and we, you know, hit the publish and we just get the sound of crickets. Nobody's interested in it. Maybe we have finished a book series and maybe we're trying, maybe going into a different genre from maybe romance to horror. We'd like to write a book there. And we write the book and again, there's a few book sales, but we get basically a no. So then because that then we kind of internalize it and we're saying to ourselves, well, you know, why did I get that? No, you know, is it because I'm a bad writer? Uh, is it because of this? Is it because of that? And we're kind of looking for the answer in ourselves rather than just maybe just stepping back and, and seeing it from the other person's side of the view. You know, maybe those blog readers, maybe I've been writing a series of blog posts on a particular topic that's been really, really popular. And then all of a sudden I jump maybe in, the, in another direction. And maybe that's not where my audience wants me to go. Maybe I wrote a weak blog title that didn't get picked up in social media or something like that. And people aren't interested in that. And that was the only reason I got to know. You know, maybe uh, in my book, maybe it wasn't successful because 
it could have had maybe a weak book cover, it could have had maybe a bad book description, maybe people were, I don't have it in me maybe to write in the horror genre, maybe I should stick to romance, maybe I'm a better romance writer, maybe my characters are weak, maybe it could have been a lot of things that maybe have caused that book to fail or caused that blog post and it mightn't actually be anything, for, you know, because of you. You know, you might have got that, no, but just to, you know, don't internalize those rejections that you get. You know, maybe it's just nothing wrong with you. You know, you might have had a series of successful blog posts, which is fantastic, but just getting one no doesn't mean all of a sudden overnight you become a weak, you know, a poor writer who shouldn't be blogging. So what does no mean to you? You know, if I say no to you today, you know, think about it. You know, what, what are you, you know, are you looking for a reason of why I said no? Or are you just taking it as, you know, that person's not interested in what I have, you know, they don't want to hear anything more about it, aren't, or maybe they're too busy to, to, to read my blog post, maybe they're too busy to read my book, or whatever it is. So whatever you're getting a no from today, you know, don't don't take it personally. Maybe it could be a genuine reason of why that person's not interested in it. Try and step back and look at it from their side of view. You know, why, why did they say no to that? And again, you know, it's like a failure, you know, we always look at failures as a negative thing. We always look for the failure of, oh, there's something wrong with me, it's because of me. I'm a big failure because I got the no, or, you know, I shouldn't be doing this, then that's why I got the no. Rather than taking it as a learning experience and say, well, right, okay, I got a no on this. What can I learn from it? You know, what could I have done better to, to maybe to get a yes? Or maybe I'm going down the wrong path with those blog posts. Maybe I should stick to the genre I'm in, in the romance rather than the horror, or whatever it is. And try and find an answer to that no. Kind of just step back and don't take it personally. Because not all of those no's that you've been getting, you know, in your business or in life are just, you know, are aimed at you. Some people are just too busy. Some people are just aren't interested. And, you know, you're never going to get a yes from them. But internalizing it and trying to find fault with yourself and taking yourself apart. And trying to find the reason why somebody said no, you know. You're not going to do yourself any good. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Again, if you always, uh, as always, you know, if you like the episodes, if you could share it with one more person or if there's social media buttons nearby, if you could share it with uh, your audience, I would really, really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for sharing your time with me again today. And if you do have time, if you just come over to the rightcom.com uh blog you'll find we have an extensive store of writing products and courses and all the different things you can try out to help uh, you know to create better fiction to promote your work or just to help with your blogging or your writing in general so if you're curious to know what we have in the rightcom store just come over to rightcom.com that's w-r-i-t-e-c-o-m-e.com and maybe you can pick up something that would really help you in your writing today so again, thanks for your time today and take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.